Is it possible that eating food, the thing that typically rises blood sugars, can actually stabilize blood sugars? The answer is yes, but the ending is going to surprise you. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to have to preface this with uh, the reason as to why my voice is a little bit softer in today's episode. It's like 10 o'clock at night. This is the only time I could get quiet hours with my little one finally going to bed. So please forgive me if I'm not my usual enthusiastic, upbeat, motivational speaker kind of mad. Uh, now, today's episode, we're going to be talking about food specifically, going into details about how I was able to use one specific food to stabilize my blood sugars through a day at the beach. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Van Devecht. I'm a certified personal trainer, a technically a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I also live with type 1 diabetes myself. And today, I want to share with you a little bit of a blood sugar hack that I think you're going to find extremely useful. Before we get into that, though, let's kick things off with our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so if you didn't figure it out by now, I do have a young one. I've got a 15-month-old. Her name's Brooklyn. She's awesome. We went to the beach over the weekend and had a blast together. Uh, in fact, this is a picture we got from the uh, the beach day, if you're on YouTube with us. She had a great time. It was cold, <laughs> in all fairness to her, so she was a trooper. Uh, and she hasn't been in the ocean in like a year, which considering she's been here on earth for just over a year it's kind of embarrassing since we live in san diego but all that aside we had a great time at the beach and uh, it was all thanks to one particular snack that i chose to have hours before we even got to the beach now if you're unfamiliar with what this might be it might just be some uh, simple missing puzzle pieces in your diabetes index of knowledge right I didn't know about this blood sugar hack for years, uh, probably over a decade, because I was misinformed by my doctors, by my endocrinologists from the get-go. Uh, reality is a lot of doctors and endos still aren't teaching this because they themselves don't know. These are new pieces of information that a lot of people just aren't privy to this kind of information yet. Uh, it's what we teach our clients in our coaching programs. We use the most updated methods and uh, strategies to manage our blood sugar so you can have days at the beach like this. Now, the snack that I want to go over, I want to say this isn't the one magical snack you have to have, but rather we're going to explore the reason why this snack worked. So I hope this day in the life kind of an approach is helpful for you. Now, the snack that I had was actually an amazing crock pot recipe that my wife put together the day before. Now, this, uh, this snack specifically was actually zero carb, which I'm not low carb by any stretch. I eat whatever the heck I want. Uh, I just had pancakes for dinner, to put it in perspective. <laughs> but what I want to share with you is that when there are low carb snacks available, I do still get excited because it is nice and I have to consider all of the strategies, right? But there are some things you're going to have to watch out for, and I'm going to share a pitfall with you towards the end of this episode that you're not going to want to miss. So stick around for that. But this one specific recipe was this spicy buffalo shredded chicken. And it was off the charts. I tell you, I had a bite. I kept coming back for more. Now, this is coming from somebody who understands the process of gluconeogenesis, that this protein, this recipe is going to come back and bite me in the butt later. But I still could not keep my hands out of this bowl. It was so good. I just kept going back for more. Uh, and part of this was strategic. Now, say I knew we were going to go to the beach later in the day. And part of the strategy that I had was my current blood sugars were actually quite nice all through the morning after breakfast. Uh, I mentioned I'm not low carb by any stretch. I think I had 100 carbs just for breakfast. Um, you know, and there's strategies associated with keeping blood sugars perfectly level through that. We can get to that in a different episode. But through the morning, blood sugars were cruising between 90 and 110 for the most part. And uh, my strategy was to use the chicken as a delayed response in my blood sugars to keep me stable at the beach. Now, there's this fantastic misconception that protein is, in fact, the great stabilizer of all blood sugars. And, you know, a lot of times doctors and endos who are 
starting to get more updated in their methods, you know, and what they're teaching will tell you, oh, if you're going to go exercise, you got to have some protein first, right? And that's the big goal. Eat your protein so that you can have stable blood sugars. But the issue is that that's not the complete truth. The reality, and I want you to lean in for this one, the reality is that protein leads to a delayed rise in your blood sugars. See, it's not that protein stabilizes you through activity. It's that the activity would actually lead to a drop in your blood sugars and the protein actually would lead to a rise. And when you put those two together, a rise from the protein and a drop from the activity, oftentimes it leads to a more stable blood sugar. So there's this misconception that protein does stabilize blood sugars when the reality is that it would have led to a rise in blood sugars in the absence of activity. So what I was using in this example, going to the beach, I knew we're going to be running around, going in the water. Uh, you know, I, I knew I was going to be spinning in circles and chasing after Brooklyn because <laughs> she's very active and, and adventurous. And so I wanted a delayed rise. It was actually a planned impact on my blood sugars. I knew it was going to be a couple hours before we got there. And so I had the chicken kind of spread out throughout the morning, intentionally snacking to push off this blood sugar rise. And sure enough, as we started getting closer towards the uh, arrival to the beach, blood sugar started cruising upwards, 130, 140, 145. I'm like, uh oh, did I have too much? That, that chicken was really good. That's why I told you guys that I could not keep my hands off of it. I had planned a very specific portion. I wasn't planning on eating half of the crock pot, uh, but it was so darn good that I ended up eating a little more than I had planned. So I'm watching my blood sugars 150, 159, 160. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I really hope this stops and comes back down. But it was a perfect example of this delayed blood sugar rise that we see from proteins, right? And so I'm thinking, all right, well, at the very least, I can be 100% present in this very moment with my daughter and wife at the beach because there's no chance that my blood sugars are going to drop far enough based on my errors or what we teach in our program. It's how you predict where blood sugars are going to go with different types of activity. I knew there's no chance that I was going to be experiencing a low blood sugar. So I thought, you know what, with this added peace of mind from the delayed chicken blood sugar rise, I'm going to enjoy the heck out of this day. If I go high, we'll figure that out later right? And we're spinning, we're playing, I'm chasing her, she's laughing, having a great time, we're all having a great time. And uh, we get towards the end of our time at the beach. I've been running around for, I don't even, I lost track of time, honestly, been running around, running through the water, it was freezing, because it's winter, it's, it's San Diego, but it's still pretty cold. <laughs> and so we're heading back to the car, I check my blood sugars, and I'm at 140. I'm like, right on, right? Like it came back down, dropped 20 points, and it's nice and stable blood sugars did not really budge. They didn't have a risk of going low as a result of protein still digesting, right? And it's this delayed rise again that we see as the great stabilizer of our blood sugars. And so really the whole day was a win, perfect blood sugars the whole time, a little higher than I would have liked typically, but I still call it a win because they were stable, they never went out of range, and they went according to plan. Now, this is the surprise ending I wanted you guys to stick around for. A little bonus for you. Uh, yes, protein works. It's a great stabilizer. It's a delayed rise technically, but it can be helpful for planned activities like that. However, my wife warned me when I got home, there was some additional ingredients. It wasn't just carb-free and chicken. <laughs> There's a reason it tasted so good. And I should have put two and two together. I should have asked the right questions. It's 100% my fault. But she let me know, in addition to the hot sauce that was in there, there was also a significant amount of butter. Now, you might not know this, especially if you weren't aware of the delayed impact that protein can have on blood sugars through gluconeogenesis, but fat can actually impact blood sugars quite a bit as well. Now, we don't have to go into the deep depths of how fat can impact insulin resistance or delayed rises or uh, delayed gastric emptying of the stomach contents leading to delayed spikes from carbohydrates or any of these crazy things. Instead, I just want you to know that fat can slow everything down, right? Which can be helpful. It can be used as a strategy in certain circumstances, but it can also destroy blood sugars hours and hours later. And friends, that's what I saw happening after I went for my lunch. By the time I got to lunch, my blood sugar tag cruised back up to about 160. I thought, you know what? This is fine. We'll just dose for lunch, give a little correction and be on our way. About 20 minutes in, 
as I'm starting to get into my lunch, uh, you know, I had pre bolus, of course, if you don't know what pre bolusing is, you need to hit subscribe right now, because we're going to talk about it in the next coming weeks. In fact, if you haven't subscribed yet, just take a second right here. I want you to hit the subscribe button, follow us, uh, make sure you, you mark the notifications, do whatever you got to do, because we put out episodes like this every single week. Everything is centered on type one diabetes research strategies, formulas, stuff that you will not find anywhere else. And I know that because we came up with the formulas that we teach. Uh, so if you have not yet, do subscribe, hit that button, smash it because you're going to want to stick around for every single video we post in the, the upcoming weeks, months, and let's be honest, years. This is all I do. This is my passion. So hit subscribe uh, because we're going to talk more about pre-bolusing next. But right now, I just need you to understand that I do pre-bolus, right? So when pre-bolusing, you take your insulin, you wait a specified amount of time. It's different for everyone. It's different for every situation. By the time I started eating... I noticed my blood sugars weren't dropping like I had anticipated. When your expectations don't match your reality of the plan, you should keep your eyes out for whatever's coming up next. So I started eating, got through uh, whatever it was that I was eating that day, probably pancakes. <laughs> I actually really like pancakes a lot. Uh, got about halfway through my lunch. I saw my blood sugars hit 172. I thought, oh, no what's going on and i double checked with my wife said how much butter was in that chicken and she was like enough that you should be aware of it <laughs> and i was like crap you know i felt my heart sink a little bit and was like all right i'm gonna have to stop eating right now and thankfully i had the flexibility to do that i had some chores around the house i could do and thank god i saw that rise before it got too bad because wouldn't you know it 15 minutes later i'm at 200 another 15 minutes later i'm at 220 i'm like this is not going my way at all. And uh, long story short, I'll abbreviate the sciencey portions of it for you in case that bores you. The fats and the proteins really caught up to me at that point, and I had to take a bunch of extra insulin. My whole afternoon was filled with activity. Uh, in our programs, we call this your accelerators, right, to help the insulin work a bit faster. And it was a whole process, and it took a while for me to bring those blood sugars back down. Now, thankfully, they didn't get out of hand. I think 220 was the highest it did get, but it ended up getting stuck for a bit there. And uh, it was a frustrating experience, but a good lesson learned that I wanted to share with you today. That yes, proteins can absolutely help to quote unquote, stabilize your blood sugars. Reality though, they're not stabilizing. It's actually a delayed rise that you're seeing. That's helping you to offset the drop that you would have experienced with the activity, right? Uh, but if you're not really dialed in on the specific amount of protein that you need, and of course, in my case, <laughs> I had a tempting crock pot full of this amazing spicy buffalo pulled chicken. Uh, so my lack of self-discipline in this example is what got the best of me. But protein can really bite you in the butt. And when mixed with fat, it's like the silent killer. It's, you think you're clear. You think you made it. Blood sugars are stable. And then out of nowhere, skyrocketing blood sugars, worse than any carb snack I've ever had. <laughs> and it just took off. Uh, I finally was able to finish my lunch like two hours later. It was a whole process. Uh, but I wanted to share this lesson with you to show you that based on how you use these tools, they can either help you or they can hurt you, right? Yeah, the knowledge I had of proteins were meant to help me and they did. Time at the beach, perfect day. It was great. Blood sugars cooperated. A little higher than I'd like, but not bad. However, the fats and the proteins together and in larger quantities than I had initially planned did come back, bite me in the butt and hurt me quite a bit later. Pulled me out of range. I was high for a couple hours. And I didn't feel great. I had to delay my lunch. I was hungry, right? And that was all a choice that I made to bring my blood sugars back into range. I know not everybody is disciplined enough to do that or has the opportunity to. Had I been at work on that day, that would have been a very different scenario. You can't wait two hours <laughs> on your lunch break. And that's where different strategies are going to come into play that you can pull from. So ultimately, you got to keep learning new strategies all the time so you can have this whole diabetes tool bag of different tips and tricks you can pull from to match with the current situation and parameters of that situation, right? So uh, ultimately, yes, protein helped. Yes, protein hurt, right? It did both. I didn't control my portions. The fat content helped it to kind of sneak under my radar and then boom, hit me at lunchtime. Uh, a lot of science behind that we could dig into, but I don't have enough time for that in today's episode. So today, I hope you found this helpful. 
Uh, what I would love to know, because this is one of my favorite things, in the comments below, I'd love to know your favorite low carb or no carb snack. So for me, uh, I mean, I love that. It's probably my new favorite snack, actually. <laughs> the spicy buffalo pulled chicken that apparently has a, a ton of butter in there as well. Very delicious. But I'd love to know your favorite low carb or no carb snacks. So drop that in the comments below if you're on YouTube with me, uh, as well as any epiphanies that you may have had. I'd love to know if this was helpful uh, sharing these day in the life kind of videos. And last week we did one uh, with a theme park and you guys seem to enjoy that one as well. So uh, ultimately looking at the foods that we choose, the lifestyle choices we make, literally everything is going to impact blood sugars. And it's not a matter of what can I not do? It's rather, how can I do these things? How can I enjoy a day at the beach and have stable blood sugars? How can I enjoy all of that chicken and be stable? throughout that time, right? There are different strategies that I could have pulled from, but the reality was human error in this case. And I am, I'm cool with owning up to that. And now I can learn from that mistake and improve upon that in the future. So uh, again, hope you found this helpful. Uh, we put videos out like this every single week, sometimes more than once every week. So if you do enjoy it, please do subscribe, share this video, get the word out there that proteins and fats do impact blood sugars. My endo and doctor told me that they were free snacks and that you didn't have to worry about it. Uh, of course, cue me, a teenager, going to eat a, six pounds of meat in a day because I was told it doesn't impact blood sugars. And I was like, well, I don't want to take shots. I'll just eat meat, right? It's not how it works. So if you want more information like this, do hit subscribe. Do follow along as we go through these different topics. Let me know what would be helpful for you. All right. So uh, I'll see you guys in next week's episode. Have an amazing rest of your day. Love that you're here learning with me about type 1 diabetes. Again, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I live with type 1, have been for a while, and it's my passion to bring this information to you so we can all learn how to live with diabetes, but also to thrive with diabetes and not just survive, right? So have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next week and keep up the fight.